Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some possessive heroes. I love me a good possessive hero who's a respectful possessive hero. There's a point where it doesn't become good possessive to me, but all these men. I love them and their possessiveness. The first one that I have to mention is Fractured Souls by Neva Altaj. This is book six in the Perfectly Imperfect series. This is the romance between Pasha and Aza. So Aza is an 18 year old who was kidnapped a few months ago and has been basically living in a version of hell since. Like there's a lot of drawings in here. Um, there's on page SA to the female main character, not from the hero, from from a different person, um, forced drugging, overdose, PTSD, and violence. So please be aware of that. She sees an opportunity one day to escape the hell that she's been living in and she takes it. She ends up running into the street in the middle of nowhere, no clothes on, and Pasha is there to save her. Pasha has lived a very solitude life um, and is a part of the Bratva, by the way, so this mafia romance. He's in a little bit of a culture shock when this woman comes to move in with him. Um, at first, like, he just brings her to his place to keep her safe and to bring her back to her family at some point, but the two of them realize, like, they cannot live without the other person. He becomes so possessive and protective of her um, to a point where it could be dangerous for the both of them. But he is very determined to hunt down and torture, maim, whoever hurt this woman. So again, please be aware of the trigger warnings, but Passion here, he is all in for his woman and will do anything and everything to protect her. If you want an alien romance with a possessive hero, I have The Quarry Master by Amanda Milo. And Bash in here, the hero, is very reluctantly possessive. He does it without realizing he's doing it. Bash is a quarry master, so he's in charge of all of the people coming together to build this settlement for humans on this certain planet. Isla is one of the human women who is new to the planet that's gonna help build um, this settlement. Um, before he meets Isla, he absolutely hates every single human he's ever come across. He thinks they're lazy, chatty, like he just doesn't, he, like he thinks they're really annoying. Um, but then he meets Isla who has a different work ethic than all the other people on the quarry. And he finds himself being very reluctantly intrigued by her. You have other aliens on the quarry as well helping out. And you have all these other male aliens talking to the women. And there comes a point where he just becomes so infuriated that these other men are talking to Isla, even though they're not together whatsoever. He's just like, why am I so angry? Why do I not want her to talk to other people? Like, what is going on with me? What are these feelings? <laughs> and he is so cute and jealous, like all the time. Um, it also goes with his alien species. Like they are very possessive, protective men in his alien species. Um, and so once he realizes like, oh, this is the way that I'm feeling, this woman must be my mate. Um, like there is no turning back for him whatsoever. Another alien romance is Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon. So our heroine in here, her name is Mina, I'm pretty sure. Yes, her name's Mina. Um, she is a slave on the space station. Um, and the space station actually holds kind of like dangerous creatures. Her job here in this space station is to clean the cells for these creatures. So our hero in here is Cruelden, who is a very, very gruff, brutal space gladiator. And he ends up one day just like really decimating his cell. He rips up all of the mattresses, the blankets, tears the sink out of the wall, like makes a mess of his cell. Um, so Mina has been sent to clean everything up. He has these cuffs on his wrists and his ankles that are magnetic and that like stick to the wall. So he's like stuck to this wall while the woman is like coming to clean up his, his cell. And this tiny little fragile human woman like looks up at him and is like, you better not do this again, dude, because like I'm sick of cleaning up. I'm sick of it. Like this is a lot, you gotta stop. And so Coulton basically makes a mess in his cell every day to have this woman come clean up after him so he can see her. Um, and there also comes a point too where he will not cooperate with the people that captured him. And so he's like, the only way I'll cooperate with you is if you give Mina to me. Like give her to me to live in the cell with me. And from that point on, all bets are off. Mina is his and he is never letting her go. For a novella, I have Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. This is the romance between James and Anina. It's a little novella, so it's fairly short. 
um, but they've always held a torch for each other. They've been friends for a while. Well, actually, he is her brother's best friend. So it's like a brother's best friend romance. Um, and they both have like a torch for each other. But then they have like a little hookup situation at the beginning of this book where the hero basically puts his foot in his mouth and it really hurts the heroine's feelings when he says something. And she storms out and doesn't want to see him ever again, basically. They finally reconnect months later, though, when Nina is getting these stalkerish feelings, stalkerish messages from people. And James is there to help protect her. And he becomes very protective and very possessive of her, like will not leave her side. He forces her to come live in his apartment with him at that point because he is very protective of her. They're also forced to kind of talk about what happened all those months ago and why it ended the way that it did. And there's like a lot going on in this one. It's just a short little novella, but this was a very entertaining read. Another novella that I have is Bulky by Jessica Kane. <laughs> this one is interesting. This is about Josie who is 18 and just about to go off to college. And she has been hardcore crushing on her best friend's dad, Gunner for years and she has decided finally at the beginning of this book like once she's graduated high school like I am going to make this man mine <laughs> and so she's going to do everything possible to make Gunnar hers. Um, there comes a point too where Josie's trying to like lure him in certain situations and it really pisses him off and really wants to protect her from certain situations. He just goes full force in making Josie his. He has been lusting after her for a while and he's found it like he's he's very guilty. He feels very guilty about the fact that he's lusted over his uh, son's best friend. But there comes a point in the book where they just are like, enough's enough, we're meant for each other. And it's, it's a grand, grand old time. Another novella, we have Big Bratva by Cassie Mint. This is one of her big boy novellas. And it kind of has a little bit of mafia elements in there as well. This one is about Madison and Isla. Isla ends up leaving the mafia a few years ago, but his brother is still stuck in it. His brother ends up kidnapping Madison for certain reasons, when you figure out when you read the book. Um, ends up kidnapping her and is like, I have nowhere else to take her, so I'm gonna leave her with my brother Isla. Isla wants nothing to do with the mafia, but once he sees Madison and realizes like the situation that she's in, he's going to pretend to like kidnap her to keep her in his apartment with him. But in actuality, he's trying to keep her safe from her, his brother. Like when his brother comes back, he's not gonna let Isla go back with him. He becomes very protective and possessive over her. Madison at first is very scared of him because uh, these men kidnapped her, but Isla's trying to convince her like, I am nothing like my brother. I am not in that lifestyle anymore. We're trying to, I'm trying to get away from the mafia and that kind of lifestyle. So um, I am going to help save you and protect you. So I thoroughly enjoyed this novella as well. A alien sci-fi one is Tamed by the Beast by Grace Goodwin. This is a part of a series with faded mates and like male order bride situations. So our heroine here realizes that she is the perfect genetic match to our hero who is an alien. Um, he looks like a human though. I think like there's no like alien like features or something like that, except for when he gets into his beast mode. So his alien species ends up getting into beast mode, which is basically like you become the Hulk, but without like green skin, you know, like you get giant um, when you, when like your temper flares or your body's on like a clock, a timer. And if you're not able to find your fated mate by a certain time period, your body will go into beast mode and it can't go out of it. And then you become a danger to society. To save other people in the society, they get executed basically because like they can't keep them safe. Um, so a heroine in here realizes that she's the fated mate to this alien guy who is basically about to die because he's in beast mode and can't get out of it. And so she travels to the planet in order to save him from being killed. And the moment that the hero sees her, all bets are off. Like this woman is his. He's been waiting for her for a long time. Um, so he's very, very possessive and protective of her. The last three books that I have to mention are historicals. First one, The Taming of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This is the romance between Kate and Broderick. We read about Broderick in book one in the series. This is book two, by the way. Broderick in book one was falsely convicted of murder and has been in prison ever since he got tortured really badly. He ended up also losing his eye from it. He's heavily scarred. And at the beginning of this book, he is basically getting revenge on the man who put him in that situation, who framed him for murder. Um, Kate ends up witnessing Broderick attack someone in the woods and she ends up running away because she's like scared. This big giant man that she doesn't know is Broderick, today, like she has no idea, is like hurting this man and she's terrified so she runs away. Since she ended up witnessing this crime and doesn't want like her like witnessing it to come back to bite him in the butt because he's been through so much already, like she is going to marry him to protect him. Broderick did not want a wife. 
He did not expect for this woman to marry him. And he has no idea what to do with a wife because he wasn't expecting one whatsoever. But the more he obviously gets to know Kate, like he cannot live without her. He becomes very possessive over her and will do anything to make this woman like his mind, body, and soul. Um, even though he was not anticipating that when they first got together. I love how you got to see this hero like fully realize that he is worthy of love despite what he's been through and ugh. It was beautiful. Probably the most possessive hero out of these historicals is um, Mr. Harry Rutledge from Tap Me at Twilight. Poppy and her family, Poppy's the heroine here, and this is part of the Hathaway series, so they're part of the, she's a part of the Hathaway family. Anyway, her uh, and her family, she and her family, Poppy and her family, are staying at this hotel that Harry Rutledge owns, and she ends up bumping into Harry Rutledge one day, not knowing that this is the owner of the hotel. And the moment that Harry meets Poppy, he knows that this woman is meant to be his. So you know what he's gonna do? Um, he's going to ruin her relationship that she already has with another person that she claims to be in love with because he wants Poppy. Like he knows that Poppy is his. He is very possessive of her and will do anything to make Poppy his, even end her previous relationship. So um, Harry is very possessive, very protective of Poppy. And um, Poppy at first like hates him because of this. Like you ruined my relationship with this guy that I am in love with. Like how could I ever marry you? Um, but man, Harry will do everything to make this woman his. And like for her to realize that She's in love with him. And then the last historical that I have to mention is In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. Our heroine here is the um, like inheritor of this very coveted piece of land in Scotland. And some people just keep kidnapping her because of it. Beginning of this book, she gets kidnapped by this very evil man who also kidnaps this little boy. And little boy is like, hey, if you help me escape, like we'll escape together and go to my father's land where he can keep us safe. Like he will keep you safe, I promise. So they end up escaping and going to the land and she ends up meeting this boy's father. The boy's father is very grateful that this woman saved his son, but then he realizes that she isn't the inheritor of this large piece of land and is like, the only way to protect you is to marry you. But then he also wants her land at some point. So like, he has like, multiple reasons for wanting to marry her at first um but then obviously when they're married and they're together more often and they get to know one another like he fully falls in love with her and when he does he becomes very very protective of her because the guy who kidnapped her before is back to get her again um and he's like you're not gonna take my woman i'm in love with her no no so um he is definitely a possessive hero. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with possessive heroes in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments, please. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.